love running. I love running. There's two kinds of shin splints. There's the, the inner shin splint that typically hurts along the inner medial part of the tibia. Uh, a lot of times it's thought to be caused by the tibialis posterior muscle pulling on the shin bone. There's correspondingly a, a more anterior lateral form of shin splints that occurs on the front and outer edge of the shin. What's interesting to note is that most people who develop shin splints in my practice are, are new athletes or they're new to some sporting event. It's an activity they have not been doing and all of a sudden they decide to pick it up and a lot of times they do more activity than what their body can keep up with. And so essentially what it represents is literally a, a pulling of the soft tissue fibers on the outer covering of the bone. That's very painful. A lot of times there will be little ridges or little kind of tender spots along the shin too. Conventional therapy typically would be to put a custom orthotic in there to uh, change the biomechanical relationships. What I find very favorable to do with either posterior medial shin splints or anterior lateral shin splints is to educate the patient about not just the painful area of those structures in the muscle belly where it attaches to the bone, but to encourage that athlete to look further down to their foot to understand this very same structure that hurts them here has an attachment point out here on the ends of their toes. So as it pertains to posterior medial shin splints, if we have that athlete out in a running shoe, hiking shoe, walking shoe, soccer, skiing, and their toes over here and their toes are up, that athlete's foot is going to undergo more of this. This is pronation, which is not bad, but if you're not able to mitigate it with your own big toe, it will create problems. In this situation, the tibialis posterior muscle is um, trying to supinate the foot or trying to bring it back where it belongs. But if the footwear is encouraging the athlete to keep doing this and keep doing this, they're going to pull and pull and pull and eventually they're going to get irritated. Anterior lateral shin splints oftentimes are related to the extensor tendons to the top of the foot being very tight. So we begin doing the toe extensor stretch for this form of shin splint. And we try to gain greater flexibility across the top of the foot, greater flexibility across the ankle and actually in the muscle belly itself. With posterior medial shin splints, we reapproximate natural anatomy of the foot so that that individual does not undergo a whole lot of pronation that their muscle is trying to slow down or mitigate. Again, the cornerstone is to find footwear that is shaped like a natural foot, get the great toe back out where nature wants it to be, correct toes, toe appliance. That position immediately shortens the distance that that tibialis posterior is pulling on the, on the bone. As soon as we send that athlete out in a shoe with a tapering toe box, a toe spring, an elevated heel, their foot's going to want to do a lot of that, and they're going to be pulling along the ridge of the bone here again. So proper footwear for both types of shin splints, um, metatarsal pad to get the toes to come out to length, stretching the top of the foot and the top of the ankle. I'm a big fan of heating with sports cream, Bengay, Icy Hot, Tiger Balm, wh wherever the irritation is, and I also am a big fan of compression therapy for shin splints. That could be something like a sleeve, a medical grade compression sleeve or an athletic compression sleeve placed over the shin, particularly with some um, sports cream underneath. And if we were to be completely medically accurate, we would actually be calling shin splints by its more new anatomically correct name, which is tibial fasciitis, and that basically is an indication of the actual structure that is irritated, which is the fascia that attaches to the tibia. I love up running, I love running. I love up running, I love running.